This is Dr. Harshman of Dr. Harshman's Medical Cost Control. Welcome back. Today, as promised, we take you to the office of Hageldox, the fictitious but successful physician negotiating enterprise. Hello, Dr. Harshman's Medical Cost Control. Muddles, fund manager of the Confabulator's local square root of minus one. Thanks for calling, Mr. Muddles. General Muddles, I'm a distinguished war veteran. Excuse me, General Muddles, what can I do for you? Can you tell me where to get more information about physician negotiation? Certainly. Employee Benefits Journal, December 1989, has an article describing the pre-estimate program. They did the study in New York City, and their method is used in many union welfare funds in and near New York. It's the same thing Biller Killer Mishmash does. Thanks, Doc. Anytime. Can you leave me your phone number? Yeah, dial 5555, and when you hear the recorded message, you press the square root of minus one button on your touch-tone phone. Hey, that's good reading. Wait, wait. Too late. Stay tuned and I'll show you how not to run a physician negotiation program. Unfortunately, this is not a live show. The call was simulated. That was an imaginary union, so it has an imaginary number. Perhaps we'll hear from General Muddles again. I just can't seem to reach him. Anyway, let's see what can happen when someone tries to do a surgical negotiation without a third-party negotiator. Hello, is this the office of Dr. Emma T. Poquette, cardiac surgeon? Poquette. P-O-Q-U-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. All right, I'll hold. I need a coronary artery bypass. General Muddles, the union boss, told me my insurance is good for $3,750. Dr. Emma T. Poquet wants 6000 Now I'm supposed to try to knock the price down all by myself. And if I fail, then they send me to another surgeon. But I want Dr. Emma T. Poquet. I have a right to accept my own doctor. I hope this works, because this way I get my doctor and the union saves money. And so do I. But I'm afraid... Do I hear anything on the line? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, can you connect me with the billing department? Hello, this is Ivan U. Block. I'll spare you the gory details. Let's just say that Dr. Emma T. Poquette's billing manager's answer was <laughs> And the poor patient, Ivan U. Block, is now ready to kill General Muddles. That is no way to run a union. Well, there you have it. That's how not to run a surgical negotiation program. Some patients are willing to be assertive and negotiate a good price, but most are not. To protect patients from abuse and to negotiate more effectively, it's best to use a third-party negotiator to do the dirty work. The third party can be a union office worker or an outside contractor. Let's have a look at an outside contractor. Doesn't look like a highly paid businessman, does he? He seems more like a militant rebel and a real nut. But let's look at him a little more closely. He carries a code book of physician codes, so he must be used to physician billing. He has a computer disk in his mouth, 
probably because he lives, breathes, and eats for computers and data. He is obviously money conscious. Most important, he is not the kind of person to put up with bureaucratic nonsense. Let's go to his office. Data right here. Yeah, I study them. What do I think of them? Phew. They make me sick. You're not supposed to eat them, but I'm not going to tell him that. That was just a bunch of overhead allocations. No deal. The allowance stands. Well, to you too. Haggle docs. No, I didn't say that. Now listen, buddy. No one promised you both your doctor and a low price. I just bargain. Read me where it says that in your benefits book. Well, find it. General Muddles, Bill of Killer Mishmash. We got at least a dozen claims from Family Women's Nurturing Center here. And at least, and the diagnoses. Boy, they're really screwy. That's the group with the subway ads that they waive the deductibles and co-payment, right? A TV ad too? Hey, listen, I got an idea. I offer a $100 reward for someone to sign an affidavit saying they saw the ad. Then we say that because they don't charge the patient out of pocket, we don't have to pay either. We pay only what the patient has to pay, right? Okay, let's do it. Haggle docs. Concealed diagnosis, eh? Well, how come you couldn't find that hammer toe when you saw the patient before? That provision in the contract is because the patient took... That can... can that... Well, take a look at that contract. That provision in the contract is for unforeseeable complications or newly discovered diagnoses only. Not because the patient took off only one shoe in your office. Your billing manager has foot and mouth disease. Talk to her. Talk to her, damn it. Podiatrists. Podiatrists. I never hear from the good ones. The bad ones are such a pain. Oh, you saw you say you saw the ad for Women's Family Nurturing Center? Okay. No deductible or co-payment. I was hoping someone like you would come along. Takes insurance as payment in full. You're sure of that now? Great. Fill out the form and sign it. And this hundred dollar bill is yours. Oh boy. Now we really clean up. General Muddles, this is Bill of Killer Mishmash. I have a signed affidavit about Family Women's Nurturing Center. Let's do it. Haggle Docs, General Muddles again. Ivan U. Block, 49 year old male. Let me get something to write this down. 49 year old male, phone number. Bypass graft, one artery, AV graft. That's CPT-33533, right? Yeah, they changed them this year, I know. Dr. Emma T. Pocat, 6000. But you allow 3750. Any special reason the patient wants Dr. Emma T. Pocat? Okay, I'll get right on it. Haggledoc's calling Dr. Emma T. Pocat. This is Bill of Killer Mishmash calling on behalf of Ivan U. Block. Dr. Poquet wants six thousand for the surgery. Doc Mr. Block's insurance allows only thirty-seven fifty. We'd like to know Dr. Poquet's best price in case we have to recommend that he change surgeons. Let me get the case right here. Yeah. When will I hear from you? I need an answer by tomorrow, or I tell Mr. Block that Dr. Poquet did not lower her fee. Is there anything about Dr. Poquette's credentials that make her better than a typical board-certified cardiac surgeon? 
I know she's board certified. So are a lot of them. Okay, tomorrow, and I note here no special credentials beyond BC. Well, they're at least decent. Haggle Docs, I told you what, that the benefit book made no such promises. Well, if you don't care what the benefit book says, I do. Now get off my wire. There we go. Haggle Docs, yeah, I would. The savings for stopping payment on family women's nurturing was, what? $450,000. Not bad for a $100 investment, right? Hey, any chance of getting me a raise? Haggle Docs. Dr. Emma T. Poquette. I got your case right here. Ivan U. Block. Because the union funds want to save money so that hard-working union members don't get hit with great big union dues, that's why. Well, you can charge anything you like, but the patient deserves to be informed and to have the option of going elsewhere. Your overhead is not my problem. Then if you want help with the overhead when things go bad, why don't you offer a percentage of profits when things go good? That usually shuts them up. Tough bananas, lady. You've got a decision to make. How much? 4000 Thank you very much. Where will you do the surgery? We got two others in that hospital who'll take thirty-seven fifty. No, I won't give you their names. They don't like crack calls any more than you and I do. Thirty-seven fifty. Thank you very much. Good idea. I'll have the patient prepay the union so you have no collection hassles, whatever. Hey, listen, if you join the list, we can probably send you a couple of patients a month. Interested? Of course better than Medicare. What do you think I am? A cheapskate? Okay, we'll do it case by case for a while. Thanks again. Hmm. I think we got another cardiologist. Mr. Block? This is Biller Killer Mishmash from Haggledocs, remember? Hey, what's your co-payment on 3750? Bring it to the union office at least one week before surgery, and she'll take 3750 as payment in full. 500 bucks. Well, you could borrow it, I suppose. Talk to General Muddles about a bank reference or something. All I've been able to do is cut the fee from 6000 to 3750 That saves you $2,250. You still need to pay the co-payment. I can't lower the price anymore. That's a pretty low rate already. That's insurance fraud. If the price goes down, then the insurance payment goes down too, and you still pay the 10%. I suggest you talk to General Muddles about a credit union with your co-workers or borrow from the welfare fund. You do intend to pay your debts, don't you? You're welcome. $2,250 saved. And he complains because he doesn't have the $500 co-payment that's left. He wouldn't have had $2,750 either. Haggle Docs. Yeah, I remember that claim. Total knee replacement. The insurance left you 3000 short. Right, not all board-certified orthopedists are equally skilled with the knee. That one cost more and that one was worth more. No, you did the right thing. Your knee is worth more than $3,000. Walking around again. Glad to hear it. But the unions have to choose between medical insurance, disability insurance, pensions, and low union dues. I just have to assume they did the best they could. I'm sorry you feel that way. Perhaps another time we'll do better. I'm very sorry I couldn't help you. You're welcome. Goodbye. I feel sorry for that man. He went to the best knee surgeon in town. The only other surgeons I came up with never did a knee replacement in their lives. And he didn't want to take a chance. This just isn't a perfect system. Haggle Docs, you again? I keep telling you.
we don't guarantee to drag every price down. And the same to you. Haggle ducks. Well, Doc, you got a choice. Either you lower your prices, or you convince your patients that you're better than the other doctors. That's up to you. Charge whatever you wish. I work for the unions, not for you. Well, that's too damn bad. Hold on, please. Hold on. Have I got a patient for you? Sometimes I really love that conference switch. Oh, I understand Dr. Harshman's on his way. Dr. Harshman? Okay, wonderful. Dr. Harshman, what can I do for you? Hello, Biller Killer Mishmash. Hey, where did you get that name? Because when the billers got out of line, I kill them. I make mishmash out of them. Can you tell us about your organization and how it works? I am a third-party physician negotiator. Unions often have insurance that pays some of a doctor's fee, but not all of it. They try to rig the rates to pay the fees of the cheapest doctor who is competent to do the work well. They hope to pay enough so that a doctor will say, All right, so I got only half of what I charged. People in that union are real deadbeats, so it's not worth shaking them down for the rest. But I got enough, so I'm not sorry I saw the patient in the first place. If that's what the doctors think, then the unions save money and the patients get treated. But many union members take debts seriously. If a patient goes to a surgeon and the surgeon wants $2,000 more than the insurance will pay, then the patient may feel or actually be forced to pay the debt. Some physicians are very pushy about that sort of thing. So we make sure that patients know the full pricing story. Many of them are surprised that fees are negotiable. Union people! As if their fees aren't negotiable. And we tell them how far down their physicians lower their fees and offer them other physicians if their fees are still too high. How do physicians feel about this? Most of them, especially the younger ones, accept it willingly. There are some older ones, however, who hate interference with their pricing, just as they hate patients who try to set their own fees. They think it's the American way to set their fees as they wish. It is. And it's also the American way for a patient to say a fee is too high and to go elsewhere. That's capitalism. Some of the new physicians love us. We send them patients when negotiations with the old-timers break down. How does that work? We have a list of surgeons and various internal medicine specialists that accept union insurance rates as payment in full. When a union member is about to have surgery or thinks an internist is too expensive, we try to knock the price down. If we fail, then first we warn the physician about the list, and then, if that doesn't work, we offer to send the patient to someone cheaper. But aren't those cheap doctors really incompetent? Not at all. We don't just send out bid forms. We look for good physicians. I'd rather say sorry but no doctor than send someone to a klutz. We insist on top-rated physicians from really good residency programs, not the darts at the directory bunch. How do you get the good ones if you pay so cheaply? We catch them as they leave residencies from the good medical centers. Every year, we write to the directors of education at the residencies and get a list of graduating residents. If they want to start a practice, then they will welcome a stream of patients with guaranteed payment. These docs also have the advantage of recent training. They're not a bunch of rusty old grumps. But are they board certified? Yes, or they're board eligible. For surgical specialties, there's little difference. For medical specialties, we try to insist on board certified graduates. But someone who can't be board certified only because he or she can't take the exam yet, we treat like board certified. Of course, we tell the patient the whole story. And if someone fails the exam, then that physician gets thrown off the list. Does it save money? Hey! Throw me today's take. I'll show you. Of course, today was a very good day.
Two of these are for me. Anything special about running the business, or is it a trade secret? Secrets? Secrets? Of course not. Of course, there are tricks. Like when a doc describes something simple up front, accepts a low fee, then does a whole bunch of stuff and fudges up the claim. Charging extra for an appendectomy when removing a uterus, for example. Or inventing adhesions when doing a gallbladder. For our viewers, what are adhesions? They're like scars that connect abdominal parts to each other when they shouldn't be connected. That can make a simpler procedure look like a chainsaw massacre. When, when, when will surgeons learn that dexamethasone dumped into the abdominal cavity reduces inflammation and adhesion formation in case further surgery is necessary? And the patient feels better without the adhesions too. Where do you get the reimbursement rates? The Union Welfare Funds had me set the rates. They come from the November 25, 1991 Federal Register data. I use them and an unpublished method to derive... Mr. Harshman, I cut out the rest of the scene because it was my data, my unpublished data, that Biller Killer Mishmash was using. Now on with the show. Well, that's how to run a surgical negotiation program. What's this? Somebody's going to give something to me? Thank you very much. From Bill Killer Mishmash. Well, that's very nice of him. I think he must have appreciated our little visit. People have pierced ears, I suppose. How do I look? Dr. Harshman's medical cost control. Hello, General Muddles. What can I do for you? A credit union? I think that's a great idea. You can lend out the money at a good rate and take money from the paychecks as a standard form of repayment. But if doctors get paid in full, they usually take less. That way the honest folks don't subsidize the deadbeats. Great. Biller Killer Mishmash just got a raise. Maybe now he can afford a gold chain. Oh, here, here's a report from Biller Killer Mishmash on effectiveness of regulations. Not you know, negotiations. I don't think he knows much about regulations. Coronary artery bypass, it's easy to lower the price. Same with cataract surgery, and almost anything that uses expensive equipment and doesn't take much time. Lasers, fiber optics, diagnostic radiology, that sort of thing. Those prices come down the easiest. But neurosurgery is a big headache. So are obstetrics and gynecology. Those specialists have big malpractice expense, they're getting scarce, and you pretty much have to take the prices as you find them. Podiatrists lower their fees easily. He's noticed that the ones on the faculty of the New York College of Podiatry seem to bill very reasonably. Of course, some of the others do too. But if you want a good podiatrist, that's a good place to start. The faculty practice means all the doctors are under scrutiny. That way, you know you're getting treatment that everyone agrees is right. If you know a podiatrist that has nothing to do with the New York College of Podiatry, that may be a fine doctor. But Miller Killer Mishmash noticed this while paying hundreds of bills and thinks it's a useful thing to consider if you're looking for a good foot doctor. Here's some information for Union Welfare Fund managers. Apparently, you'll need an RRA or RN and a clerk for about every 20,000 covered households. Have a good computer and pre-number the claims so that a claim from a pre-negotiated visit for surgery can be cross-checked by a computer when it gets paid. Guarantee payment of the allowed amount in full. 
You can't fudge up the billing or pay the doctor more than the amount based on the charge, though. Make the patient borrow and deliver the money to the Union Welfare Fund office. Have allowances at hand when negotiating. Be ready to quote increased payments for unforeseen complications. Refuse to pay for complications or additional procedures if they can be known about before surgery. Expect that a claim may have dishonest billing even for properly done procedures. A physician may lower a fee, but try to make up the difference with creativity on the claim form. Promise prompt payment, three weeks or less. Pay part of a claim that requires special handling. Don't keep a surgeon waiting for the entire fee when the surgeon did more work than he or she bargained for. Make the first appointment yourself and confirm with the patient the day before the appointment. That way, you reduce the risk that the patient won't show up. Finally, be sure to solicit feedback from the patient. That way, you won't send someone to the same bad physician more than once. And you can tell skeptical patients what a high percentage of people you have referred who are happy with your choice of physicians. That's all for now. Join me next time for a discussion of gatekeeping and the reason why gatekeepers need special instruction in psychology. For a free public access program guide of all the shows on public access, send a self-addressed stamped envelope, two stamps to 29 and a 23, that's 52 cents postage, to Access Manhattan Magazine, Department EJH, Box 319 Gracie Station, New York, New York, 10028. Please specify if you want Paragons or Manhattan Cables schedule. It's free. Do you want to do your own show? If you have an idea for a non-commercial show centered on healthcare cost control, any perspective, any format, and are willing to supply a finished videotape or rent a studio for a live show such as a call-in format, please let me know. 212-865-7552. If you have an idea for a show not related to healthcare cost control, but like another show you see, then maybe its producer would be interested. Call the telephone number displayed during the show and offer your ideas and, very important, labor. It's public access and you're the public.